Okay, Agatha All Along Episode 7. Is it able to continue its streak of good to great episodes? Let's find out. Episode 7 picks up after the major reveal from Episode 6 that Teen is actually Billy, Wanda Maximoff's son. Well, sort of. Here we get Billy and Agatha sort of forming a love-hate bond, but continuing on their journey. This episode reverts back to the formula of everybody in one room. This time it's a Wizard of Oz slash Sleeping Beauty, I guess, because we got Maleficent. I don't know, witches? Great witches, I guess you would call this. They did throw a quick line in there on whether Wanda was dead or not. Then the teen asked Agatha if she actually seen her dead. And the answer was kind of not certain. So I guess they're leaving that open to we might see Wanda appear somewhere one day again. As I guessed in the last review that Lillian and Jen probably aren't dead. We got confirmation here. They are back and surprise, they're not dead. I guess we kind of all seen that coming. And they eventually join back up with Teen and Agatha to finish the trial, which they think is Billy's trial, but it actually turns out to be Lillian's trial. And once again, this is where the writing really shines through here in this show. They managed to build a good story with the limited characters and locations that they actually use. This episode is partially told from Lillian's perspective as she experiences time out of order. And we kind of see what it's like being her with the scenes flipping back and forth. And we also get to see some of the random outbursts from all of the episodes this season weren't really random, that they actually played a part in the story. And I think this was really good writing on the writer's part. Some of the things that she said and did had to do with things that were going to happen or already happened. And it all made sense when it's played in her perspective. And overall, I think this played out really well. It wasn't one of those episodes where they treat the audience as if we're dumb or we need everything so thoroughly explained because we can't follow. But this episode actually had some intellect to it and it made you think and put things together on your own and didn't say, hey, we're going to hand feed you everything on the platter. But they kind of just gave you the concepts and ideas and let your wheels turn a little bit before they explained everything. So kudos to them for that because so many things are so spoon fed sometimes and I get they want the whole audience to grasp the concept as easy as they can. And being that this episode was a little shorter than the last episode, I know they had a lot of things to fit in there, but they did it really well without making the audience feel like you were mocking us for not understanding the show. We didn't get much from the Salem 7 again here, which I was a little disappointed in because I feel like with only two episodes left, there's so much they could do with these characters, and I feel like they're not going to be able to do it. I think the last two episodes are supposed to premiere together as like a large season finale, which there's still so much we have to cover that I'm afraid they're not going to get their just due. And being how their characters are really tied to Agatha and probably not that popular, I don't know if we're going to see them outside of this series, and these Disney Plus shows don't really get direct season twos. I just hope they bring them out a little more and show us more of the Salem 7. There's a lot of potential there. One of the reasons that I say we're probably not going to get much out of them is because they are still at this point introducing and revealing giant things. Like they dropped a giant reveal on us. If you haven't seen the episode, I hope you've seen it because you come in here watching this review. Obviously, there's spoilers, but here it goes. Rio, Aubrey Plaza's character, is none other than Death. Yes, they revealed death in this episode, which is a pretty big character, a lot of relation to Thanos and things like that. I hope we get to see him pop back up somewhere one day, one time. But for now, yes, it's been revealed that Rio is death. There's a lot to unpack here. So for these last two episodes, they really have to bring it. I hope they really have something grand for us and don't just drop off like some of the other Marvel shows do towards the end. Because this show really is more about the story for me at this point. Even though it's a show about witches and magics, they really don't rely heavily on the CGI or special effects or anything like that. And honestly, some of the trailers portray this as having a big horror element. And it really hasn't been presented here. You might have had like one or two scenes in one or two episodes. But for the most part, it's been pretty mild, I would say. Maybe just a notch or two away from Charmed. The acting in this episode is on par with the last few episodes. Pretty amazing. Everyone is still believable. It's still great. I'm still in tune. I'm waiting for the last two episodes. I can't wait to the premiere. Um, so far, this, this is in the top three of my favorite Marvel TV shows. I know to some people that might not mean a lot, but that's something, especially being based on a D-list character. What do you guys think? Do you guys think they're going to be able to pull all of this off in two episodes? Do you think we're going to get a significant ending to the Salem 7 and Death and Billy's story arc? 
What do you think is going to end? How do you think it's going to turn out? Let me know in the comments or let me know if you're going to be watching the season finale or if you even care anymore. That's my review. Wasn't much to say about this episode and that's that. See you guys next time.